This is Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. You know, uh, diverse survivors of crime. They have joined together to launch a new advocacy and support network. And on the phone line with me uh, this morning from uh, the Alliance of Safe- Alliance for Safety and Justice, the lovely Shakira. Shakira, what's your last name, darling? Diaz. Shakira Diaz. Diaz. Shakira yes. Diaz. Yes. Thanks Good. for having us on, KG Smooth. Appreciate it. Oh, you are so very welcome. Please tell us about Alliance for Safety and Justice and what it is that you all do, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who may not be familiar uh, with the organization. Sure. Well, the Alliance for Safety and Justice just launched uh, a national expansion of crime survivors for safety and justice. And it's a national network that gives crime survivors uh, an opportunity to have a voice in public policy that brings them to the center of the conversation of criminal justice reform. Um, you know, as you know, um, for the last several decades, there's been a lot of conversation about criminal justice, and the rhetoric hasn't matched the public policy reality or what crime survivors actually want or need. Um, so, so with Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice, we recognize that survivors deserve a justice system that prioritizes healing, prevention, and recovery over incarceration. Indeed. So it's been a it's a great opportunity for crime survivors who have felt like they're invisible um, to come together and and to make those recommendations. That sounds great because um, we need that type of change in the uh, criminal justice system. It never made sense to me if we know that someone is suffering with some sort of substance abuse or some sort of um, mental illness, which causes them to act out at times, that they would opt out, they would opt to put them in a jail cell versus getting them the treatment and the help that they need so they can overcome whatever it is that they're going through. And it seems to be a bit counterproductive. Exactly. You know, research shows that eight in 10 victims experience at least one symptom of trauma. Um, And that contributes to a number of different problems, including addiction, housing instability, mental, uh, and and challenges with mental, mental health, mental health issues. So as a result, oftentimes crime survivors are at a higher risk of repeat victimization or uh, behaviors that lead them to that lead to crime itself. Oh man, you're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Shakira Diaz from Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice. They have just launched a new advocacy and uh, support network for those that may uh, be listening. Uh, when it comes to uh, policy reform. Um, what actions are being taken? Sure. Well, I, I can share with you a little bit about a model that we've been working in partnership with crime survivors to elevate around the country. It started out in California. It's a trauma recovery center, um, which provides wraparound support and healing for crime victims who have experienced some sort of victimization or trauma, and to really help people, one, along their healing journey so they can recover from that experience. Um, Oftentimes we we hear um, about PTSD only in certain contexts, but really a lot of folks experience that, um, specifically crime survivors experience PTSD. So part of that, um, part of the work of a trauma recovery center is exactly that, to help somebody recover from the trauma that they have experienced, as well as helping them navigate all the different systems that they need to navigate um, in order to, to be able to, to recover, get back on their feet, and live live a healthy, fulfilled life. Indeed. And so what is it that um, people that are listening, like how can they contribute and uh, help support the survivors and, um, and 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 the initiative that you are taking with this uh, new support network? Sure. Well, first and foremost, I would urge everyone to visit our website. It's crimesurvivorsforsafetyandjustice.org. There you can join an online community of 10,000 uh, members 
who are disengaging and supporting one another and making these great recommendations. So I would say that is a first, second, and third step. Come visit our website and join this community. Um, there is really focus on centering uh, crime survivors and, and centering healing, prevention, and recovery, and really getting and creating a, uh, a justice system that's responsive to the to our needs. I'm, I'm a crime survivor myself. Mm-hmm. Um, have buried nearly 40 loved ones um, um, in my life. So I I know uh, how much this is needed because it was never there for me when I was was in need of it. So I'd urge folks to visit crimesurvivorsforsafetyandjustice.org and join us in, in building safer communities. Absolutely, indeed. We are definitely going to do our part. Uh, You're listening to Access Houston. We have on the phone line this morning uh, Shakira Diaz from Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice. Uh, Shakira, I'm interested to know, um, how did you find out uh, about uh, Crime Survivors uh, for Safety and Justice, and uh, what made you want to be involved and, and do more work? Sure. So for, um, I started out professionally, um, I live in Cleveland. I lived in Cleveland most of my life. Oh, wow. I, um, I did radio in Cleveland on uh, 93.1. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, 93.1, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was younger, I used to have to sneak and listen to 93.1, um, but I can listen to it now. It's okay. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> wow, small world. But I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, so I grew up in Cleveland. So you, so you know what Cleveland is like. You have mm-hmm. a sense that it's, you know, it's definitely a community that that's in need in, in a lot of these supportive services. Um, but I started out professionally as an educator, and I worked um, in two local high schools and was fortunate enough to work in my old high school, which is East High School. Okay. Um, and, and just realized that. Uh, children and families were not getting the support they needed in order to position their children for success and wanted to learn a lot more about the barriers that that stood in our community's way um, and worked for 11 years on criminal justice um, and educational juvenile and and juvenile justice reforms. learned about the work happening through Californians for Safety and Justice, which is where we started. We started out in California, and we've branched out nationally and and recognized that in so many ways while we were um, in the past, I was advocating for criminal justice reform, an uh, important constituency that was being left out um, are our community members, you know, um, who've experienced some form of victimization and and recognizing really clearly that there is no help or support for families when when they're hit with trauma. Oftentimes, parents don't know, um, you know, they're going through their own struggles. They don't know how to support their children. Mm -hmm. Schools are not providing that support. Um, So it's really complicated, creates a gap. But there's some lingering implications of that, um, of that unaddressed trauma, right? Um, you know, if if we're not seeing people when they're hurting and they need support, we will see that, the the, the implications of that later on. Oh, so yeah. the best way, you know, to really build a safe community is to acknowledge and support the humanity in everyone. Yes. Um, so that that's why connected to this work, it, in, in many ways I feel that, I can bring my whole self to work, um, that I can bring the totality of my experiences, whether that is, you know, someone who's who's advocated for many years for criminal justice reform, but I'm so proud to be able to bring support to my community, um, support that we've never seen before that allows us to, to feel um, and to acknowledge our own humanity. Sometimes we have to do that for ourselves first, and then we're doing that collectively as a community. So I'm, I'm really proud and humbled by this work. Indeed. And I am so glad that you are one of the soldiers who are on the front line uh, of change and, and support for these people. Because as you were um, speaking, Shakira, I was thinking to myself, yeah, it is important that these folks have some sort of support system because if not, then 
it will lead to depression, which will then lead right. to more, you know, who, who knows, whatever that person's vice may be. They've already been through some trauma and then no one is listening and they have no support and then they become depressed and, and maybe turn to drugs and and who else? Right. Who, who else knows? It, it could lead to suicide. So this and something that people need in our community. So uh, thank you for sharing this information. If you need more information on uh, Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice, just log on to their website. That's cssj.org, cssj.org for all of the information. And uh, Shakira, I thank you for taking the time out and sharing your story and more importantly, getting the word out about crime survivors for safety and justice. Well, thank you for helping us and doing doing that and and feel free to visit the website yourself. It, oh, it's an opportunity. I'm I'm sure that you will see yourself in there as, as many of our um members see themselves there as well. Indeed. Thank you so much for joining me, Shakira Diaz from Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth, uh, welcoming back to the program the founder of Big Give Houston, the lovely Megan Ortiz. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming back because when you were here uh, the first go round and we were, you know, talking about the organization, you were telling me about the really big, big, big event mm -hmm. that you guys are having on Tuesday. And uh, that is. Hashtag Giving Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, so we were originally supposed to have our event in September, but, right. you know, Harvey came in, changed a lot of plans for everybody. And with that, we had to react, moved our event to Giving Tuesday, which is November 28th, this Tuesday. And so from midnight to midnight, we are saying, save a little bit of that holiday money mm -hmm. and invest in our community, invest in a local nonprofit um, at BigGiveHouston.org. Yeah, and I I think that that's going to be uh, the way that a lot of people in Harris County and in the city of Houston is going to go because Harvey affected everyone in, in some way. Absolutely. Um, before we get more into uh, Giving Tuesday, which is this Tuesday, the, the 28th, mark your calendars for it. For those who uh, may not have caught our very first conversation, mm -hmm. Tell us about Big Give Houston and uh, what you all's mission is. Sure. So Big Give Houston is a 24-hour fundraiser. It gamifies the way that we raise money for nonprofits, if you will. So on one day of the year, we say, let's focus on local efforts. Let's focus on local nonprofits and how they are shaping our community. Uh, many people support nonprofits on a regular basis, but are the missions that you're supporting the actual people who are working in our backyard and making the real change that's happening in our community. Hmm. So Big Give Houston says, hey, we've got 300 nonprofits that are on our website. Find a few that maybe you supported in the past. Find a few new missions that you'd like to support. There is a mission out there for you. There is a nonprofit that is doing real life-changing work in our community in Houston, in wow. Harris County, in the surrounding counties. Go into the website, read more about them, and support them during Giving Tuesday and Big Give Houston. Yeah. I love it. So uh, uh, BigGiveHouston.com is basically a huge directory for exactly. nonprofit organizations. Yeah, and we want to keep it local. We want to make sure that Houstonians are investing in Houston. Indeed. You're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Megan Ortiz, who is the founder of Big Give Houston. Hashtag Giving Tuesday is this Tuesday, uh, the 28th. So when you say Giving Tuesday, um, for those that are listening... They're like, well, well, what do you want us to give? Right, right. So, you know, we want to encourage everybody to be a philanthropist during Big Give Houston and Giving Tuesday. And this year, Big Give Houston just happens to coincide with Giving Tuesday, which is wonderful because it, yeah. Giving Tuesday says save a little bit of those dollars. Big Give Houston says keep it local. So, you know, we have um, limits set at minimum of $10. And we want to mm. say, hey, you know, save your dollar between now and Big Give Houston. Save two three dollars a day and you'll have enough money to donate to one or more charities um it's a one-stop shop so it's going to be one credit card transaction for the donor we want to make it easy for donors to find missions that they care about but we also want to make it accessible to be a donor everybody can be a philanthropist during sure. big give houston 
Sure. That, that, that's amazing. And um, for more information, where can they go? And follow you guys on social media. You know, these, everything is social media based. Right, People right. Find I know. Who, their needs, phones. who needs a website these days, okay, right? Really? <laughs> um, so the website is biggivehouston.org. And we're on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Um, the email, if you'd like to reach out to us, is hello at biggivehouston.org. Um, we've got a great team. Um, I should also mention that of all the giving days around the country. So this this kind of event is happening in major metropolis all over. All over. All over. Um, but Big Give Houston is the only one that's volunteer run. Hmm. So, you know, it's it's really great that we're all coming together and we're giving our time um, beyond the dollars just yeah. to make sure these nonprofits um, have a voice. We want to amplify their message and their mission and say, you know, hey, these organizations are local. Why not support the person that's working in your backyard? I love that. And, you know, however I can help to continue to get the word out about Big Give Houston and you know, because it's just amazing work that you all do. And, and, and that's why I use this platform to make Absolutely. the city more more aware yeah. and, 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 and more self-aware. So however we can help. I mean, Megan, I, I, I really mean it. it. Yeah, I do. Because as you were talking, I was thinking to myself, like, uh, not to say that you all haven't, but I'm like, why? Haven't I seen her on any of the big news channels? Um, somebody like Ellen would love this. Like just, just all of these yeah, things are going absolutely. on in my head as you are as you are talking. So um, yes, well, Ellen, give me a call if you hear this. Um, <laughs> okay. I will fly there gladly. I'll actually be in your neck of the woods in a few weeks. Um, but you know, I think one of the beauty the beauties about the support we have received across the community is it's people like yourself. Um, locals who are excited about what's happening in Houston, who want to support Houston missions. And uh, we're so grateful for the media that has been, that has been receptive to our, our mission. Well, you are more than welcome and open invitation. Perfect. So I'll take you up on it. <laughs> indeed, Please do. Please do. <laughs> Megan Ortiz, the founder of big give Houston, uh, the website, big give Houston.org. I'm sorry. I said.com earlier, big Houston, biggivehouston.org find out all the information about hashtag giving tuesday this tuesday the 28th so uh save the date and uh and good seeing you thank you for coming yeah, through good to see you too and thank you for listening to access houston we'll be back with more access houston on 97.9 the box